The Audi TT from 1998 was something of a revelation. It was largely unchanged from the concept that wowed the crowds just three years earlier. The TT had the looks of a bona fide sports car and had rapidly become the car of choice for the in crowd. It wasn't sparkling to drive though, but subsequent versions, particularly this third generation car, have been just as good to drive as they are to behold. So it's no surprise the TT is still so popular. Combining good looks, strong performance and the prestige of the Audi badge, it's one of the pace setters of this sector. There's a selection of petrol engines available for the Audi TT, starting with a 177 brake horsepower 1.8, then there's a 227 brake horsepower 2 litre, and then in TTS version only, a 306 brake horsepower 2 litre, all of which are turbocharged. But if you want a diesel, there's only one unit available, a 181 brake horsepower 2 litre TDI Ultra. The entry level petrol is precisely as quick as the original 1.8 TT, while the range topping TTS is explosively fast, but the regular 2 litre is all you'll ever need. It feels fast at virtually any revs and will crack 60 miles per hour in under 6 seconds. This engine is the only one available with both front and four wheel drive, but the latter is heavier and comes into its own only in damp and slippery conditions. Despite having a lot less power to call on, the TDI diesel is also rapid. In fact, it doesn't feel that much slower than the petrol in the real world, thanks to its muscular medium rev shove. So it's worth a look if you're a company car driver or cover lots of miles. The standard suspension gives a firm but generally comfortable ride. And even if you go for the optional sport setup, it doesn't make things too bumpy. TTS models come with a magnetic ride adaptive damper system. It's a great system that's also available as an option on cheaper models, but the ride is good enough that it's not really worth paying the extra for. Nor are the larger wheels, up to 20 inch, which spoil things a little. Handling is the TT's forte. It feels nimble, grip levels are huge, and there's hardly any body lean, especially in versions equipped with the stiffer sport suspension. Turn into a corner and the light, accurate steering gives you a good sense of what the front wheels are doing. So it's easy to judge whether you need to back off a bit. In wet conditions, front wheel drive versions of the TT really struggle to get the power down, especially coming out of corners. But four wheel drive quattro versions are unflappable. The TT is never going to be as hushed as a luxury limo, but other than some wind noise around the frameless windows and a bit of road noise, this is a pretty quiet cruiser, certainly when compared with its rivals. The S-Tronic automatic gearbox can be a little jerky when manoeuvring, but this is really the only chink in the armour. Drivers of most shapes and sizes will find it easy to get comfortable behind the wheel. There's plenty of adjustment for the steering wheel and also for the seat. The dashboard is really rather simple with a few clearly labelled buttons set neatly into the fascia. This minimalist approach has been made possible by positioning the main screen, which displays everything from the stereo to the instrument dials behind the steering wheel. This 12.3 inch colour display is standard across the range and means you don't have to divert your eyes too much from the road to see it, though it does mean that your passenger can't help out quite so easily. You control the system using this big rotary dial in between the front seats and there's also some neat shortcuts to take you to the system that you want to use. A DAB radio and USB sockets come as standard, but disappointingly, satellite navigation costs extra and is available only as part of a fairly pricey technology pack. Visibility is a little restricted, but it isn't too bad by coupe standards, especially out of the front. Pulling out of junctions requires a bit of neck craning though, and the high waistline restricts over the shoulder view. Audi doesn't fit rear parking sensors as standard either, though you can pay extra for them. The TT's cabin is really something to behold with solid feeling and high quality materials throughout. And there's also panel gaps that are so small, they're practically non-existent. In fact, the TT's interior is so smart, it shames those of far more expensive sports cars. Even a Porsche 911's cabin doesn't look or feel significantly more special.
There's plenty of space in the front for tall adults, although if you are particularly leggy, you may wish that the front seat slid back just a little bit further. The wide cabin also means you feel less claustrophobic and hemmed in than in many sports cars. The back though is less generous. These seats are really useless for carrying people. Even small children will be cramped here. It's more of a space for bags and coats that you don't want to put in the boot. There's enough storage in the cabin with a small cubby in front of the gear lever to keep valuables out of sight. The single cup holder between the front seats is deep enough to stop a tall cup of coffee falling over. You can also fit a couple of bags of shopping in the rear footwells. By official standards, the TT has the same size boot as a Ford Fiesta, but while it's broad and square, it's also very shallow. Weekly shops won't be an issue, but carrying taller items will usually require you to fold down the rear seats. Fortunately, this is within easy reach of the boot opening and the 50-50 split seats fold flat, leaving a useful space. The low lip and hatchback opening means the TT is surprisingly practical. You could fit a bike in, though you will have to take the front wheel off. Compared with its rivals, it is pretty pricey, but when you take into consideration performance, it is a strong value. Solid residuals mean that the TT will hold on to its value far better than most alternatives, and the running costs are impressively low. The diesel model offers as little as 116 grams per kilometre of CO2 and 62.8 miles per gallon, which will be enticing for company car drivers. You'll want to add a few options though, which will drive the price up a bit. Whichever trim you choose, it costs extra to add parking sensors and climate and cruise controls, while sat-nav is also an expensive optional extra. Entry-level sport trim gets air conditioning, Alcantara and leather seats, Xenon headlamps, 18-inch alloy wheels, Bluetooth, a USB socket and a DAB radio, covering all of the other important bases. Audi as a brand doesn't usually fare that well in our surveys if you consider reliability alone, and the previous generation TT scored a below average result too. At least many of this TT's oily bits are shaped up with other models in the Audi lineup, so I tried and tested. A four-star score at Euro NCAP is down to a relatively low 68% for child occupant safety, but with four airbags as standard, along with a collision mitigation system to prevent the car rolling away after an initial crash, gives it a good 81% score for adult safety. The TT isn't perfect, the back seats are cramped, it's not cheap to buy, and you'll probably want to add a few optional extras. Having said that, it is brilliant. Alongside being rapid in any form and with great handling, the Audi Sport's a high-tech, user-friendly interior that wouldn't look out of place in a luxury car. Brilliant to drive and easy to live with, it's one of the best on the market. For more information, search for the Audi TT on whatcar.com and for all our latest video road tests, click subscribe.